सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुली लेट वन फेबर इवनिंग इन टू थाउजेंड एंड वन शेख रिसीव एन इन्विटेशन टू टी एट मेडीना होटल क्रेडल्ड इन साइड द लेन ऑफ मुंबई चीता कैंप like many young muslims of his generation enraged by the demolition of the babri masjid sheikh had joined the students islamic movement of india within months though the air conditioning mechanic had become bored with listening to speeches on islam and jihad a year after he drifted away from simi then came the meeting at the medina hotel one which would leap deep scars across india Two weeks after the carnage of 9/11, India had moved to ban Simi, charging the organization with sedition and support for terrorism. Even though hundreds of key Simi operatives were arrested and interrogated, though police forces and the intelligence services missed the real story. Following his meeting at the Medina Hotel, Sheikh crossed the border into Bangladesh and boarded an Emirates flight headed from Dhaka to Karachi through Dubai. From Karachi, Sheikh later told police, in testimony which under Indian law cannot be used against him for the purposes of his trial, he drove on to a Lashkar-e-Taiba camp near Bahawalpur. There he began training with the core of former Simi members who were forming what we came to know as the Indian Mujahideen. Lessons learned from the Simi story help understand the prospects and the perils of last week's decision to ban the popular front of india or pfi the simi ban choked visible islamist political mobilization but it didn't cut off air to jihadist groups worse jihadist networks became more walled off and operated with a discipline and secrecy that blinded india's security services for almost 6 years from 2005 to 2011 India's police and intelligence services were to fail clueless in the face of the most lethal urban terrorism campaign the country had ever seen. Ever since 2016, the PFI has regularly faced allegations of its members joining transnational jihadist groups like the Islamic State. Kerala resident Shajir Mangalasari Abdullah, accused by the NIA of recruiting for the Islamic State in Afghanistan, was a supporter of the PFI's political wing the Social Democratic Party of India Safwan Pukatel a graphic designer with the PFI house journal Tejas is alleged to have been among Shaji's recruits along with Mansid bin Muhammad who researched Hindutva for the now banned organization Kanur origin Muhammad Samir who took his wife Fazia and their three children into the Islamic State Caliphate in Syria once served as sub divisional convener of the pfi in valapatnam and earlier this year police in assam charged makibul hussain the former pfi district head of barpeta of recruiting for ansarullah bangla team a bangladeshi al qaeda affiliate that has carried out multiple terrorist attacks targeting left wing secularists and the hindu religious minority Telangana police in turn arrested PFI activist Abdul Khader on charges of providing kung fu combat training to hundreds of young men although local media later reported that nothing in this case was found that was more incriminating than and quote three sets of loose paper bunches three handbooks a notebook and some bus and train tickets Long before the recent killings in Karnataka and Kerala PFI cadres were also alleged to be involved in religion driven political violence two members of the National Development Front that is one of the three organizations that merged to form the PFI were also charged with involvement in the hacking to death of eight Hindus at Marad in 2003 It bears mention though that far larger numbers of cadres of the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh the Communist Party of India and the Indian Union Muslim League were also reported to have been arrested in that case 
But then in 2011, PFI members chopped off the hand of Iduki College Professor T.J. Joseph. Over a question, purportedly blasphemous, he had said for second year BCom students during an internal exam. And in 2013, the Kerala police said it had discovered a training camp for jihadis set up by the PFI near Kannur. Like in the case of Simi though, the exact connection between the organization and jihadist groups like the Islamic State isn't usually clear. In most cases, Islamic State recruits were former PFI members rather than active cadre. The case of Sadiq Sheikh is instructive. Failing to find jihadist opportunities in Simi, Sheikh turned to distant relative Salim Azmi, who was later killed in a controversial police encounter, to make the right connections. Azmi is alleged to have put him in touch with the ganglord Amir Raza Khan, who in turn financed the training of the core Indian Mujahideen members. So were Simi involved? Yes. Were others also involved? Also yes. The recruitment of former PFI members like Samir into the Islamic State also took place in the diaspora, clouding the details of their stories. Islamic State recruiters, moreover, have drawn on several Indians with no known PFI link, underlining the role of personal ties and online propaganda in turning someone from an Islamist activist into a terrorist. From the demolition of the Babri Masjid, Simi's language had become explicitly pro-jihadist. At its Kanpur convention in 1999, seven-year-old Gulrez Siddiqui was held up before an estimated 20,000 cheering members. Islam ka Ghazi but shikan mera sheer Osama bin Laden, the child intoned, which for those of you who don't speak Hindi means warrior of Islam, destroyer of idols, my lion Osama bin Laden. Simi called for a caliphate claiming Indian democracy had failed the country's Muslims and even appealed to God to send down an avatar of the temple pillaging 11th century conqueror Mahmud of Ghazni. Learning from Simi's mistakes, the PFI has studiously avoided inflammatory language. The organization's constitutional, researcher Mohammed Senan C.H. notes, commits it, and I quote, to upholding the country's democratic and secular order, working for peace, and advancing the cause of minorities. Through an extensive network of social network organizations, the PFI also engaged in large-scale welfare activities. The organization's cadre, for example, built schools for poorly served Bengali-speaking Muslims in Assam. The organization engaged in anti-drugs programs in Kerala and medical outreach across North Indian states. Funding for these programs, the PFI claims, came through 10 rupee a month contributions from its 5 lakh members, as well as some affluent donors in India and West Asia. Early in its trajectory, Simi had used the same tactics. In 1982, for example, it organized what was called an anti-immorality week, burning purportedly obscene books. It won approval among communities with programs seeking to draw young people away from drugs and alcohol and into the mosque. The historians Irfan Habib, Iktidar Alam and K.P. Singh observed in a 1976 essay that Simi's social service wasn't altruistic. Its motive was, I quote, the preservation of Muslim separateness, not the end of Muslim backwardness. Like the PFI, Simi thrived scholar Yoginder Sikand has perceptively observed because it gave its young Muslim supporters a sense of power and agency which they were denied in their actual lives. The organization flourished also in a political landscape where Muslim political representation within the large mainstream parties had atrophied. This created a vacuum which Islamist organizations like Simi could fill. Their rhetoric offering the illusion of a solution to the problems faced by Muslims, if not an actual solution. The ban on Simi ensured an end to public displays of the toxic Islamism the organization peddled. Arguably, that language could have led to a dangerous escalation of communal violence. But this came at a cost. Large-scale arrests of young Muslims accused of Simi membership most of whom were later acquitted by the courts, engendered deep bitterness. Former Simi president Shahid Badar Falahi, 
ironically among a group of political islamists who sought to resist the jihadi current spent 14 years in jail accused of having pasted a sticker on a wall local police moreover found simi members a convenient scapegoat for indian mujahideen terrorist bombings when they began in 2005 that allowed the real perpetrators to continue their attacks for years unchecked the toxic influence of islamism represented by the pfi is the result of a complex matrix of deeply embedded political and social problems the fight against it needs political action not just police officers i'm praveen swami and i'm national security editor of the print